So we thank you, Cheyenne, for all of your hard work. Wow, is it a lot of work uh, going into all of this? And I just want us to take a moment. Can we give her a round of applause? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. 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 So to echo what Cheyenne said, we did, we all came here to learn more about fat disorders. And for those of us who have these chronic illnesses, we came to learn how we can heal our bodies, right? I'd like to propose to you all that before we learn these important things, together we ask ourselves this question. Is it possible that hating our bodies while trying to heal our bodies is really an oxymoron? Oh, we did it. OK, so I was told that I had to prepare a slide for disclosures. And so these are the disclosures about me. I happen to be a mixed media artist. And <clears throat> I will be teaching a body positivity mixed media art class tomorrow. My work is available online. And you can read more about my classes and my work on my website, klhack.net. That's done. OK, so. Uh, now I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. You can see my name there, Katherine Lynn Hack. I really am super excited to be here with you all. I was diagnosed with lipedema in 2016. And like many of you, my diagnosis brought a sense of validation because we knew something was wrong, right? But it also brought a new grieving process. I had to contend with this new label for myself that was different than what I was used to saying about myself. I had to grapple with the idea of chronic illness. I went from being a woman whose body was fat, but it was also strong. It made two healthy, amazing children. I could lift weights. I could open pickle jars. I could carry all four bags of groceries up the stairs to our place in one trip. That's very important. So I went from having what I understood to be as a weight issue to having what felt to me like a scary chronic illness. It took me some time to grieve this new self-descriptor. And then eventually, through a process I'm going to share with you today, I learned that maybe all of these things could be true at once. I am strong and I am powerful. I live my life in a fat body with a chronic illness. Those are all true things. So Dr. Maya Angelou's simple exhortation has in many ways been a mission of my life. When you learn, teach. And when you get, give. In our time together, I want to share with you what I learned. And it is my deepest desire to give you the freedom that this journey has given me. Who's ready for some learning objectives? Look at all those words. Yay. OK, number one. We are going to critique and criticize our culture's beauty standards and how we are taught to value ourselves when we do not meet this beauty standard. We're going to articulate how a lifetime of cultural fat phobia often manifests as shame and denigrates our ability to love, honor, and value ourselves. We're going to engage in the work to make peace with our bodies, recognizing this as essential in order to pursue health while having a chronic illness. We're going to repair and replace old messages about our value by introducing new appropriate validations from other voices seeking change in our culture and our community. And there are so many other wonderful voices out there. I'm so excited to share some of these with you. Um, we're going to illustrate how a personal piece of art, yay, art, can help us reframe what is beautiful and worthy of our admiration. And you heard this touched upon already by Cheyenne. We're going to develop a community around ourselves committed to cheer for one another. We're going to champion emotional, spiritual, and bodily wellness. We get to do that together. Yay! So that's what we're going to cover in one hour's time. Woohoo! <laughs> 
Okay. How many of you heard the term fat phobia before? Want to raise your hands? Okay, so a little more than half of us. This is an official term that has been a part of actual um, academic research. I'm gonna read it to you. The official definition of fat phobia are the prejudiced feelings, overt discrimination, and bullying of fat people and children. One of these, <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, that slide looks like the formatting is a little bit off. I apologize for that. One academic paper that uh, is quoted here says that, I'm gonna turn and read it from my slide. Widespread stereotypical and prejudicial attitudes towards fat people have been well documented among the general population as well as among several types of healthcare students, professionals, including doctors, nurses, dietitians, and nutritionists. I'm sure we can um, call upon our own experiences to validate that statement. We probably didn't need scientific research or academic academia to tell us that. So for those of you healthcare professionals that are working to change this in your industry, we all thank you. There's a lot more work to be done. This super boring slide is just to illustrate how much research I was able to find with a simple Google search on research dealing with fat phobia. And again, fat phobia is an official term that they're doing academic research on. And this is just touching the surface of it. I fit as many different articles that I could fit onto one slide, and I, I had so many more. I did not read every single one of these articles. I am not in academia, I am an artist. But they're there, they're out there. And what the conclusion is, the bottom line of this research that backs up our everyday experience is the fact that living as a fat person for many means living in a culture hostile towards us. Now, I want to take a moment and address why I choose the word fat as a self-describer or descriptor. First of all, I spent most of my life ashamed of the size and shape of my body. I carefully avoided the use of the word fat because for me that word was full of pain. And several years ago, I became increasingly interested in social justice work, which led me to reading more and more about intersectional feminism. Woohoo! Okay, so that wonderful fancy term applies to those of us who simply believe that all humans deserve dignity and equal treatment in our societies. Yay, woo -hoo. intersectional feminism, whoa. Okay, so in my story, while reading and learning from these amazing writers and voices in some of these movements, I came across the term fat activism. And of course, my ears perked up and I wanted to know more. I read a ton. There's a lot of great information out there. It's so exciting. Things are going on that maybe a lot of you in this room don't even know about. Uh, people pushing back against this oppressive, oppressive culture that wants us to feel shame, right? And so there are voices out there. You can just Google fat activism. You'll find some great stuff. You'll find some not great stuff, but you'll find some great stuff too. So for me, the takeaway as it relates to using the word fat is that I, as I began to use this simple word as, as my own self-describer, it didn't take very long before there was no sting and no bite in it. And it took the power away from, again, what feels like oppression in our culture, and I had freedom somehow. It felt like this magical process. I'm grateful to have made the transition so that uh, as my two kids were growing up, they could learn the word fat in a completely neutral sense. It was not a loaded word for them. Until they entered school, of course, <laughs> and were exposed to the larger culture. I will point out that number 21 on this, oh, and that was cut off too. Uh, it looks like I had some formatting issues, and again, I apologize for that. You can't actually read number 21, but 21 on my list is a study called Body Stereotyping and Stigmatization. Uh, I tripped on that word when I was practicing. 
Stigmatization. Oh, darn. All right, you guys know what I mean. Stigmatization. Oh, man. Uh, okay, we're going to press on. Of obese persons by first graders. It was a whole academic paper about how obese people are stigmatized by first graders. That was the research. Next slide. This is my family. So speaking of first graders, here are some. <laughs> uh, this is my lovely husband, Christopher, and he and a whole crew of friends are helping to hold down the fort while I am away. Thank you. Thank you, Christopher. Hi, Nathan. Hi, Julia. Hi, Mom. Yay. So before I left on this trip, I asked my precious darling son if I could share a story that um, happened his first year of school. I don't know about many of you, but I have a tendency to use writing as a means to process my feelings and kind of cope with whatever I'm dealing with. Nathan said yes, by the way, so I have his permission to tell the story. I wrote about it, and uh, when I did do this writing, it was still pretty raw. So um, I decided that I would like to share a portion of that with you today. I became a 300-pound woman with a baby and a toddler. As my children grew, so did I. Ask me how many times I made it to the gym. Ask me if I ever had a personal trainer. Ask me how many blanking articles I read. Ask me about exploring fat activism and fat acceptance because I still want and expect to be treated well no matter my size. Ask me what it felt like to hear my five-year-old crying days after I volunteered in his kindergarten class. Days after. He was crying because his, his peers were saying that they didn't like me because I am fat. Do you know how I vowed to myself to get my weight under control before my boy started school? Have any of you made those kind of vows? It was for that exact reason. To my child, this darling boy, I am the sun and the moon, and he loves me with a kind of ardent devotion I didn't know existed in the world before him. Can you imagine how it felt to keep my voice even? As I said, all people, all the people who know me love me. Your best friend likes me. People come in all shapes and sizes, and we need to treat everyone with kindness. He replied, face in pillow, still crying while his sister slept. But no one else has a mom as fat as you. He said fat as a description word, not as an accusation. And before that day, I believe he's never heard the word fat spoken with disdain. I know, honey. I know. Shame. The brilliant Brené Brown says that shame is the web of unattainable, conflicting, competing expectations about who you're supposed to be, and it is a straitjacket. I know I'm not the only one who felt shame or has felt shame about the body that I was just trying to live my life in. Turns out, shame is bad for us. It doesn't feel good. I know we all know that. But it's also bad for our health. One academic researcher, uh, Janine Forner, she has this to say about it. Shame creates a stress hormone response. Stress creates a cortisol release. Inflammation and infection is higher in bodies subjected to constant shame. Shame can lay a heavy beating on your immune system, digestive system, and overall, your ability 
and will to thrive in this world. Ah, can any of us relate to that sentiment? Yeah. That was my story for such a long time. This is a list of academic research uh, exposing the negative effects of shame. So that one quote sums it up pretty well. But again, study after study after study is looking at shame and saying, we got to start figuring out how to get away from shame. Shame is not good for us. It's hurting us. It's literally hurting us. So the good news is that as much as there's research about shame and its effects, there's also some good resources for how to move away from shame. I particularly enjoy Brené Brown's work. And uh, you can find her things on YouTube. And I'm sure many of you even know her name. Um, she's become pretty well known recently. Yeah. Also, I want to talk for a moment about something um, Dr. Stephen Hayes, uh, a psychologist, he created this concept that I find really, really helpful. There is a different, the difference between what is dirty pain and clean pain. Have any of you heard this concept before? Okay. So, uh, clean pain is I have lipedema and after a long day of walking, my legs hurt. There's physical pain in my legs. Dirty pain is <clears throat> I feel bad about myself because I can't seem to get into the ideal body that society tells me I need to be in. I don't have enough willpower. I must not be good. My family's embarrassed of me. That's dirty pain. That's a heavy load. That's a heavy load for us to carry when we happen to suffer from a fat disorder that makes meeting this societal expectation that much harder. So if we can try to cope with the clean pain in our life, the fact that we happen to live with a chronic illness, we will be able to do that and succeed and live these thriving, wonderful, rich lives if we can choose to find a path away from the dirty pain. The dirty pain is what's tripping us up. We don't have to live with it. We can make the decision that we don't have to live with shame. I'm so happy that I went on this journey that said, I can just get up and put some clothes on in the morning and not feel ashamed of myself for walking out the front door. This process did not happen overnight, but it did happen, and if it happened for me, it can happen for you. And I learned, so I want to teach, and I got, I want to give. Okay, so in my life, this is what the cycle looked like. There was shame, and that created inflammation in my body, thanks to cortisol, and it made physical pain, and that physical pain, because of our chronic illnesses, led to additional weight gain. And then the cycle keeps going. It equals more shame, more inflammation, more physical pain, right? More weight gain. This is a terrible, freaking awful cycle. I don't like it. So I decided to do this instead. <sighs> Reject the shame. Again, I'm not trying to make light of the fact that this is somehow magically easy. No, it's actual work. It's emotional work that we can choose to do. If we can choose to do it together, it's going to be freaking awesome. OK. I get kind of excited sometimes. Please bear with me. So we're going to reject the shame. I chose that. You will have to decide for yourself what you're going to choose. No one here is going to make you do it. So <clears throat> what I started doing was following the free. This is amazing. I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of people out there already doing this cool work in body positivity, fat acceptance, fat activism. It thrills me. I love reading about all of it. And um, there's these uh, websites where, I know there's going to be a fashion show later tonight, but there's like a ton of people out there doing like plus size fashion and like wearing awesome clothes and being like, look at me, I'm amazing. I love that. I saw today, today I was like laying down in bed and I decided to like play on Facebook like you do. And there is this, let me find where I wrote her name down. Oh, oh, where did I write your name down? Ooh, darn, I'll find it. I think it's on a later slide. There, there's this woman Oh, sorry. 
Anyway, she was telling, um, she was writing a little Facebook post. She was wearing this cool outfit. She had like a crop top and like tight jeans and cool shoes. She was like in front of like this cool uh, brick building. She looked very cool. And she wrote, she said, oh, Fat Girl Flo. Ha, I knew I'd think of it. Okay, that's the name of her thing. You can find her on Facebook, Fat Girl Flo. She's flowing. It's awesome. So she's, um, she's wearing this cool thing, and she said that three years ago, I really wanted to be able to wear crop tops. And today, I got up and just threw this on, and I was like, oh, I wear crop tops now. And I was like, whoa. So even for her, like it was a journey, it was a process, but imagine the freedom. Imagine the freedom to be a woman of size, to be a fat person, and being okay with that, and deciding that she wants to wear long pants and a crop top. I love that. Good job, Fat Girl Flow. All right. Okay, and then self-care. Oh, Fat Friendly Friends. This is exciting. So my longtime best friend, her name is Holly. Hi, Holly. She's watching. I'm so happy all these people are watching via the streaming. Cheyenne, thank you to whole, everyone and the whole team for making this stream. That's just so thrilling. I've never streamed before, and I feel extremely fancy. So, <laughs> yay. <laughs> so my longtime best friend, Holly, you know, she grew up in the same culture we all have grown up in. I started learning about fat acceptance. She went on this journey with me. And it was so cool to have both of us at the same time re-educate ourselves, use different vocabulary, start to see other beautiful fat women as beautiful, start to look at like a full arm and belly rolls, like, oh, I love that shape. That's beautiful. It's so cool when that happens. Sometimes we don't realize that our minds, they're, they're not static. They're plastic, which means we can learn new things. We can change the way we think about something. That's the coolest thing ever. So we can view someone who maybe society at large would be like, oh, don't wear that crop top. We can be like, oh, I love that she's wearing this crop top. Whoa. So. Anyway, we're going to have fat, friendly friends, which means you surround yourself with people who, again, like I said in the community, we're simply creating relationships where people are going to cheer for us, where they're not going to be constantly talking to us about, oh, I feel like I look fat in these jeans. Let's have less of that and more. That woman is rocking that crop top. That's our choice. So, and then fat friendly friends come in all shapes and sizes, and I love this. There's an art piece that I didn't make a slide for, but it's, it's called Twigs and Hips, and it's this uh, piece that I made. This woman is standing a little bit provocatively, and she's got some serious hips going on, and she's got some cool foliage. It's pretty exciting. And my friend Holly wanted it, and so uh, she purchased it from me. And um, she put it up in her home, and her little three-year-old boy said, oh, I want to be her. <laughs> Isn't that exciting? OK. So these fat family friends are going to help us do self-care. We have probably learned by now that having a fat disorder means we require a lot of self-care. So your community that's encouraging you and nurturing you are going to help you carve out the time for the kind of self-care that is going to help you be well and help you to continue to do the work to reject the shame. And it's another beautiful cycle. So this is the new cycle for me. I decided to get rid of the old cycle. This is the new cycle. You can adopt it too if you choose. So uh, remember when I mentioned intersectional feminism? This is one of my favorite writers. Uh, her name is Virgie Tovar. She happens to come from the Bay Area. I'm from Oakland, California. She's in San Francisco. I started following her, and I felt like, like she was like famous. And so I got to see her at a book signing, and I emailed her because I was told I have to get written permission to have a slide and a picture. So she told me it was OK to put her awesome pictures up and her super cool quote. And if you want to learn more about Virgie Tovar, you can see her website there. I also, pretty <clears throat> significant in my journey to move away from the shame, there was a book by Lindy West. Has anybody heard that name, Lindy West? 
She's awesome. She wrote a book called Shrill. Isn't that thrilling? I'm going to take a drink now. Watch out. Anyway, so, so I really loved her. So Wendy West, uh, Lindy West, and um, you can just Google it. You can Google intersectional feminism if you want. Or you can just Google these other things I already mentioned. But anyway, so this is following the free. This is one example of this cool free woman who's an awesome writer and thinker. OK, so what freedom looks like for me, maybe for you too. Oh, see, I wrote Fat Girl Flow on this slide. <laughs> OK. So freedom for me meant that I decided to use art and other media to expose myself to positive reflection of fat bodies. And again, I really already touched on this. This is following people on our social media that are out there living in their bodies unapologetically. Doesn't that sound amazing to go out in the world and live in your body unapologetically? So anyway, they're out there. You can follow them. And then in my story, you're going to see in the next couple of slides how art played a role in it. And freedom for me also meant creating this community of people who are um, on this same kind of journey where we're not talking about weight loss talk all the time. We're not talking about our current measurements. Um, as much as I'm pro get whatever treatment you want or it's going to help your life, like whatever um, way of eating and the guidelines you choose to use there, I I'm super in favor of that. However, I feel like in my own, my own personal life, I've started shying away from before and after shots. Because there is a community for even those of us struggling with fat disorders to believe that a smaller person is always better. And we're going to see before and after you change up the way you eat. And yay, you're smaller. That is better. And it is not better. I mean, it's awesome if you feel lighter in the world. Fantastic. And by all means, do whatever's going to help you be in less pain. I don't want anyone in pain. But I don't want my value and my worth and my ability to hold my head up high to be contingent upon whether or not I went down a size or two or if this number on a scale is different. We have got to move away from numbers equaling our value. You are valuable. You are a human being that deserves dignity. And I am valuable. And I deserve dignity. And I expect people to treat me that way, regardless of the size of jeans I'm wearing. Ooh, I got all excited there. OK. Yay. So uh, if you maybe read my bio, I did spend about 10 years as a, as a minister and a pastor. And I, ministered on college campuses. And when I was doing vocational ministry, I was teaching a lot of life skills to college students. And we talked a lot about interpersonal relationships. And there was this message that really sort of manifested as what felt like to me my life message. And it was simply, we get there together. We grow and we mature and we become whole, not alone. Human beings just simply weren't built that way. We really don't do that on our, by ourselves. But together, we really do. That's why community is so incredibly essential in this process. So cultivating a community around ourselves, committed to cheer for wholeness and every kind of wellness. And then we get there together. We get to freedom together. Oh, clicky thing. OK, so has anyone else seen Courtney's um, work? Does anyone know this amazing artist? She's amazing. OK, so Courtney, again, she gave me permission to show this slide. Courtney Michelle Gertzen. This is the per first piece of artwork that I purchased. I'm late to the game in calling myself an artist. And it took some time before I was ever interested in drawing the human form, much less a beautiful fat figure. But when I saw this, I was like, Wow, she's like a goddess. She's like magic. She's, she's so free and alive. She's beautiful. And I, I wanted it. And so Courtney is like an amazing gifted artist. It turns out, I was told by Brianne tonight, that some of her art prints are available for the raffle. 
I don't know if you know about the raffle yet, but there's going to be a raffle. You can own Courtney's work, just like I own Courtney's work. I bought some prints, and I put them uh, in my bedroom, where I would see them every day at this little table I sit at, and I put lipstick on. And that's when I would see them every day. So after a while of owning these prints, some, somewhere inside of me came this urge and desire of like, I gotta make this art. There's some art inside of me that, that needs to come out. And I, I wanna reflect myself to the world in this, this new way. So Courtney inspired me to start making art I see myself in. The very first piece I ever did that uh, reflected kind of a lipedema form is the, the piece that says Beloved. I had the, the cool opportunity to go on this little art retreat. And I, throughout the course of my life, had occasionally like sort of sketched my form. I don't, I'm not particularly great at sketching human figures, but I think there's something about, again, the human condition that we have this very strong desire to see ourselves represented um, again, in media or even in other people around us. That was touched on by Cheyenne, too. Like, that's what's beautiful about coming here is we see ourselves in each other, and it feels better. Again, because human beings are meant for community. So I, I was at this retreat with strangers. I didn't know anyone at the retreat. And we're putting together papers, and then I sketched on top of it, and then we put wax over it. So encaustic collage, it's very cool. Check it out if you don't know about it. And then, I don't know if you can see it very well in the slides, but throughout my life, I'd spent most of my time trying to hide my hips, trying to push them in. And here in this little art piece, I put these sparkles on her hip line. And I, I wanted her curve to be where your eye went. I wanted beauty to be in her form, and it is. And I did that work in front of people that I didn't particularly know. And again, I really think it's because I'd been looking for months and months at Courtney's work. Yeah, her art changed me. So we became Facebook friends, and I think I may have come on too strong, but I really want her to be my real life friend. <laughs> Hi, Courtney. OK. Back to self-care, one, um, you know how life can just get a little crazy and hectic sometimes. So I have two children. And life just felt hard and stressful. And I told my husband, I'm like, I have to go for 36 hours. I got to go be alone. Leave me alone. I got to go away. And I went to like Priceline and like got a hotel room that wasn't very far from my house just so I could be someplace clean. And nobody could talk to me. And I, on my way out the door, I grabbed this container of modeling clay. And the first day I was there, I just watched TV all day and laid in bed. And then the next morning, I moved the furniture around and I put this you know, hotel table in front of the window and I sat there and listened to podcasts and sculpted a form that looked as close to my form as I could do. And it was so freaking healing. It was amazing. I don't pretend to be a great sculptor. I've sculpted like three or four things in my whole life, but I was, I needed to do something tactile with my hands. I, I needed to lovingly craft that body, my body. I'm not good enough, and I didn't have wire to like put arms and legs on, so <laughs> that's the best I could do. When I started making a lot more artwork, again, I met the, <clears throat> the kind of artwork I do is mostly mixed media. I love the freedom. The mixed media just means you can use every kind of medium available. So <laughs> markers and crayons and watercolors and paper. It's so fun. There's so much stuff you can do. I love that. So I eventually had a friend of mine take a photo of me in like a powerful pose. Because when you Google search figures of women to get ideas and inspiration, all of these photos, I mean, all of this artwork, not all, very much of the artwork is pictures of women looking sad and small. How many of us have seen artwork where the form is sort of like, and we're supposed to be like emotionally engaged with it, and, and again, that's fine, but the ratio of powerful women to small, hurting, not powerful women 
is kind of amazing. So I decided like, all my ladies, they are bringing it. So I did the most powerful pose I could find, and then I extracted my form, and then created lots and lots of art. And it feels freaking amazing. Yay. All right, so when I started to see art in my own body, I started to see it in a lot of other people's body. And um, this is sort of me <clears throat> highlighting other human beings with lipedema and fat disorders who are living their life and loving their body. This is my friend Stacy Ann Gross. We are friends just because of the Facebook group, so <laughs> I don't have that many friends with lipedema in real life, which is why I'm excited to know you all, and we can be best friends at the end of this conference. But Stacy was on one of the Facebook groups, and she, she has kids, and she um, got away for a little while, was doing some self-care, and she's in the bath, and there's candles, and um, she took a picture. She's enjoying her beautiful legs as the water and the, the candlelight, and it was just, it was the most beautiful image. And so I um, messaged her, and I was like, can I take that image and like play with it? It's so beautiful, I just love it. I just feel like the need to make art out of that. And she said, okay. So <clears throat> Stacy is a human being that is um, choosing to love her body. And so I asked her if I had permission to use her picture and stuff, and she said yes. And then I said, would you write a little bit of you know, your thoughts and feelings about this that I could share? Uh, at the conference, and she said yes. So here I'm gonna read what Stacy wrote. Hi, Stacy. I'm a firm believer that you should try to avoid telling yourself things you would not say to someone else. Would you tell a stranger that her legs, her thighs are unattractive? No, that would be rude. Don't be rude to yourself. Don't teach your children to be rude to themselves. Children can tell how we feel about ourselves, and they mirror those thoughts for their own bodies. I make a point to compliment myself out loud around my children. Truthfully, I don't always want to. But I have four children, two of each gender. I believe that how, we talk, I, believe that how I talk about myself will become their inner voices for their own body image. Changing society's view on body image starts at home. Raising people's self-worth and self-confidence starts at home. Show your children how to love their bodies by loving your own. Yay, Stacy! Okay, another woman who has lipedema and is choosing to love her body and embrace her body is Dr. Kate Brown. She has a Facebook page that's taking up space with uh, Kate Brown. And she also has a website, katebrown.net. I also asked her to write a little thing for us, and I'm gonna read what she has to say. I was diagnosed with stage two slash three lipedema in early 2016. I had stopped pursuing intentional weight loss after my son was born in 2013, so I already had a few years to go through the process of coming to terms with the reality of my body. But the diagnosis brought up a lot of those old feelings of wanting to be thin because if there was really something wrong with me and it could be fixed, then I'd finally be thin, right? It was tough being tempted back into that kind of thinking. So I had a choice to make. I had to separate my lipedema diagnosis from my body image by asking, is there a treatment that could alleviate the pain but didn't make my legs look normal? Would that be enough? As it turns out, there is. Three wall procedures later, I am pain-free and running half marathons, but my legs look exactly the same. If I were stuck in a mindset that equates my worth with thinness, I would still be want waiting for permission to be happy. Body positive self-care makes it possible for me to remove struggle and suffer from the vocabulary of my body so that I can live the life I deserve. And that's what I want for everyone, a world where we can all have access to what makes us feel happy, free, and loved, no matter what our bodies look like. Yay, thank you, Dr. Kate Brown. Another person you can follow, we're following the free, well done. All right, another woman that inspires me and is part of our 
fat disorder community is Katya Page. She is the lipedema queen. Does anyone know about Katya? Yay! She is a ferocious human being. I love that about her. It is intoxicating, don't you think? Okay, so Katya has some stuff to share with us. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Oh, Katia, thank you so much. Thank you, whoever said that. I appreciate the correction. Katia, thank you. Okay, so she, um, she shared a little bit of her story with us as well. She says, I watched my mother's passing due to complications from lipedema. Now I have dedicated my life to educating, advocating, and helping others with lipedema. In 2013, I began to search the internet for explanations about what could be wrong with my mother. I came across a lymphedema website that also talked about lipedema, a condition I not, had not heard of before. I joined an online support group. Wasn't that like the first step for so many of us in here? Thank God for those groups. Yay. It's good to know you're not alone. I joined an online support group for people suffering with lipedema. I found a doctor and was officially diagnosed at stage four. Now I knew how dire my situation was and I had to be proactive with my health and treatment plan. I became a lipedema ambassador out of shock at the lack of information available. I expanded my personal advocacy and blog, Katia, the lipedema queen, into the organization, the lipedema queen. We encourage women with lipedema to embrace, to embrace the queens that they are and raise funds to financially assist with the expenses that will be incurred for surgeries, treatments, medical grade garments, which are not currently covered by most insurance. The Lipedema Queen organization is designed to show that a disease does not define you. Be courageously competent and embrace you. Thank you, Katia. All right. All right. This is my friend Patty. Patty runs a Facebook group called Lipedema Fitness. Yay! Does anyone else a part of that group? Do you guys love it as much as I do? Yay! Okay, good. Everyone needs to go on Facebook and follow that group because it's the best group ever. I also asked Patty to share with her thoughts for tonight. And again, let me just take a moment here. I, I, wanted, I wanted you all to know that I'm not the first person to think of this. I'm just the one that wrote up a proposal and submitted it for the conference because I felt like we could all use to hear this. But there are women that have gone before me. There are people out there living their lives, lives choosing to love the bodies that they live in because it's possible to freaking love the body that you live in. Okay, so, yeah. Okay, so Patty has this to say. Did you know that the body positive movement has been around since 1977? And there was a fat acceptance movement, movement in the 60s. I didn't. I learned about the movement well after being diagnosed with lipedema in 2007. It was actually only a few years ago when I joined a couple of body positive support groups on Facebook that I really began to understand the movement. One group was for fashion, right? And the other two were for fitness. All of these groups had one thing in common. They were filled with people like me posting pictures of themselves in a very loving way. At the time, I just lurked. I wanted to find out where these people shopped. I wanted to see what other bodies my size were doing for fitness. They had rules too, no weight loss talk, period. They were perfect as is in that very moment. It really got me thinking about my own body, my lipedema body, how I saw it and how I wanted to see it. I knew what I did for my body, all the effort I put in to make it as strong and healthy as possible. I knew if others looked at me, they would have no idea what I did or how I cared for it. I decided that I had to start showing others what I did, not only to explain what I was doing to my lipedema, to my lipedema fitness support group members, but also so that others could see my body doing fitness. I had been training with my CrossFit coach in the park for several years, but I started taking pictures and videos of what I was doing and where I was, go where I was doing it. I posted those pictures and videos on the Lipedema Fitness Support Group first, and then eventually I posted them on these other body positive support groups too. I was blown away by the positive responses. She has a community. 
the comments and the inspiration and how people were telling me that the movements and modifications meant so much to them. One day back in January, a member of one of those fitness groups, Kristen Penaud, commented on a video I posted. It was of me finally being able to lift a heavy bag from a squat position. Okay, so Patty is super strong. She's like a superhero for real. She can also flip tractor tires. It like amazes me. Okay, so her comment, again, this is just another fitness person. She's not um, a lipedema person, but Patty is just deciding to share her story more broadly, right? And so her comment was, oh my God, you're a warrior. And then a few minutes later, she posted a cartoon image she drew of me saying, I hope you don't mind. So this cool image that you can see of my awesome friend Patty, a stranger in a support group, part of her community who was cheering her on and seeing this body doing something amazing was so inspired that she made art out of it. Isn't that thrilling? She sees this woman that our culture would say, you don't get to wear workout clothes. You don't get to move your body out in the open at the park. You should be ashamed of yourself. But no, she's out there in the world posting her videos and someone sees it and they say, you're a warrior. You're amazing. I have to make art. Patty says, how cool is that? I looked at this piece of art she created of me. I felt like one of the Incredibles. No capes. She made me feel incredible. I literally drove around for days thinking, someone turned me into a piece of art. She told me that I look like a superhero or a Viking, and she had to draw it. Uh, I took the video to see my form, to see where I could improve it, to share the, mo the, mo the movement with others, to show them a visual of what I do, to help explain it, and someone else got inspired to make art. I love that. Patty is my personal friend now, even though we haven't actually met in real life. But then, so I'm going to read the next part, but she's like going on and on about me being great, so I'll just read it to you. <laughs> Catherine Hack is an artist, a fellow Lipedema sister, and one heck of a dancer. I do post dance videos of myself and sometimes my little girl on the fitness group for Lipedema. It's, she really encouraged me to do that. It's been kind of fun. She saw a picture that I took of my shadow last year, and she turned it into art. She took photos that my husband Bob took of me and um, made art. So Catherine has a gift, a way of showing us what she sees in us. And the more we see ourselves like others do, the more self-love we will create. In the words of Peter Gabriel, in your eyes, I am complete. So that's my photo edit of her shadow, the We Are Powerful. And then here is a slide. Come on, dude. Those are, those are all my patties. I'm really new to calling myself an artist. It was something I came to a little bit later in life. I, I was someone that was like, oh, I'm crafty. But I'm an artist, and Patty is my first ever muse. I love it. I love making patties. So those are all of my patties. If you come to my, thank you, if you come to my uh, art workshop tomorrow, there is only room for 50 people, people. So get there, be early. Anyway, I have these <clears throat> lots of silhouettes of lots of different shapes and sizes of folks with um, fat disorders, and you could make your own patty artwork. Yeah, so see those ones in the middle on the bottom? Those are silhouettes that I had printed and had them cut, and um, those are patty. So you could have your very own patty. Everybody should have a patty because she's freaking awesome. She's one of the best humans ever. Yay, patty. All right. Do you know that we have been together for almost an hour? Is anybody else having a great time? <laughs> Thank you for letting me share. So in summary, uh, our culture is full of fat phobia. There's a bunch of, you know, again, in some of these groups, they'll call someone out for behavior, and they're like, so this fat phobe said this. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Anyway, so that's number one. We, <laughs> we, um, we live in this culture, and it's very easy, and most of us have experienced the internalized shame from growing up in a culture of fat phobia. 
So it creates this internalized shame, but we saw that cycle. Remember the cycle? Shame is bad for us. Let's not do that. So we can decide together to reject shame. Yay! Did you know you can do this? Okay, someone nod that like, yeah, let's do this. Let's make this happen. Cool. Okay, good. Thank you for nodding, poor people. Well done. Okay, so I think you can use art to change. Uh, again, using other media outlets and seeing people that are out there living their lives. In my story, art made a huge big difference. So I think it could for you too. Um, and then finally, we're going to cultivate that community. We're going to get there together. We're going to believe that we can push back on this culture that says you don't get to exist as you are and say, yes, we do. Me and my crew say we do, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Ah, when you learn, teach. When you get, give. I learned how to love my body. I live in freedom. I got free. I desperately want to give it to you. We can get there together. If you want to contact me for some reason because I'm awesome, that's how you do it. <laughs> Thank you so much.